So here's the problem. I need to run an audio cable from my laptop over to my stereo receiver and it's about 30 feet away. And I don't want to splurge for a bunch of shielded cable to run from the 8th inch headphone jack on my laptop over to the RCA inputs on my receiver. So I'm going to take a shortcut. I'm going to use some Ethernet cable instead. It's twisted. Each pair is twisted at a different ratio than the previous pair. So they minimize crosstalk. I think it's going to be fine. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple of RCA jacks to the back of my stereo receiver. And we'll see how it works out. There might be interference. There might not. Let's find out. Let's start by making the 8th inch stereo jack assembly first. So now this is some ethernet cable that I found that is stranded. So it's very, very flexible. It's not solid, so it's gonna stand up to movements much better. And I've chosen to use the orange lead as the right channel and the green lead as the left channel. So I've just went ahead and twisted the orange, white, and green white together and that's going to be my ground reference. I'm just going to go ahead and solder these up to this jack. These are a bunch of jacks I got on eBay. They came from China. They're really cheap. But let's look at the inside of them here. So you can see there's four conductors in here. Now this terminal right here corresponds to the tip right down here. This terminal corresponds to the second lead which is the right channel. The tip is the left. The next ring is the right. The next ring is actually ground, which is this one right here. And you would think this one is ground, but no, it's not. This is the microphone input in case you're using a headset that has an external microphone, like so many little headsets that come with your phones. So left channel, right channel, ground, and microphone input. But what we are going to do is we're going to take this microphone input right here, and we're going to attach it to ground just by soldering a jumper wire from the back here to the front right here. So let's go ahead and get that part ready and ground out the microphone input. So the phone or whatever you plug it into recognizes that it's not a device with microphone inputs. So I've got a pair of pliers here with a rubber band around it so that they'll kind of clamp in a little makeshift vise. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a bead of solder to the back side of this. There we go, that looks nice. Now this here is just a lead from a resistor or a capacitor. And I wanna just tin it. Then I'm just gonna tack it down here. And then I'm just gonna bring it around town. I'll bring it back around here. Clip it off. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now I'm going to add a little bit of flux to this to make the solder flow just a little bit better. So this is Amtec Flux. It's the flux that Lewis Rossman recommends. If you haven't seen Lewis Rossman, check his channel out. It is absolutely awesome. It just helps the solder to flow a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll add some solder here. Let it get up to temperature. There we go. That one's soldered. Now that that is soldered, we'll go ahead and flip this over. We'll solder the other side. So it's a complete ring. It's soldered on there now. So the microphone input is soldered to ground. So the phone or whatever you plug it into will recognize that it's an actual stereo device and not a multimedia device like a microphone or a headset. So now all we have to do is go ahead and attach our leads. Ground is going to go to right here, left channel to here, right channel to here. I'm just going to tin those. This is the green and this is the orange. Now we'll go ahead and trim those off a little bit to make them a little bit shorter so they'll fit a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so next I'm going to go ahead and pre-tin the leads on these, the terminals, so they'll accept the solder much more easily. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of flux to make the solder flow better, just to make it easier to solder. And I'm going to do the same thing on the leads. So now make sure if you're going to do this that you don't forget to slip the cover back on the cable before you solder it. 
So I'm going to start and I'm going to solder my orange lead, which is the right channel, which goes right here. And then I'm going to do my green, which is the left channel. And then I will go ahead and add my shield. Just like that. Now all things being equal, this should just about line up perfectly because I cut the leads to different lengths. Next we'll go ahead and just screw the cover back on. There we go, covers back on. Now I could add some heat shrink tubing up here to heat shrink this together, but it's very flexible cable. It's not solid core, so I think it's gonna flex just fine. Now let's go ahead and prepare the RCA ends. So I'm just going to start by lopping off my RJ45 connector here. I don't need that anymore. It's gone. I'm going to strip back probably about, I'd say four or five inches off the end of this cord. So I'm just going to very lightly score this. see if it's going to want to come apart peacefully. Oh yes it does. Very nice. So we're only going to use the greens and the oranges. And if you look closely you'll see that they're normally twisted at a different twist rate which minimizes interference from the other cables. So I don't really care about the blues or the browns at this point so I'm just going to go ahead and lop those guys off. They're gone. So now I just have a two pair twisted cable with greens and oranges. So my left channel is going to be the black jack. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. I'll go ahead and put the sleeve over the greens. And based on what I see on the jack here, I think we can strip them both to the same length and we're going to be okay. There they are, stripped back. Let's go ahead and tin them up. And we'll trim off the excess. And then I want to pre-tin my jack. So I don't think flux will be necessary on this jack because they're much larger connections. So my green white is going to be the ground lead and my green shall be the hot. All right, left channel is done. Let's do the right channel now. So same thing for the right channel. Let's go ahead and slip our cover back on it. Go ahead and strip back just over an eighth of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and clamp the other lead. Wow, this one's really bent up. I think it'll be okay though. Because I'm not going to use the strain relief because this is going to be a basically a motionless area. So I want to pre tin the leads. Don't keep heat on those too long, they will melt very easily. And once again, we'll trim those off. So the, once again, the orange white becomes the ground. Now the orange becomes the hot. And we'll slip the cover back on it. And there we go. So we have our right and our left leads ready to go. And now on the other end, we have our eighth inch stereo jack assembly ready to go. So let's go ahead and hook everything up and give it a try. All right, so let's go ahead and plug the cables in now. There's my left and my right going into the CD input back here. 
Okay, so I have my laptop set up here and I have some YouTube copyright free audio. So there's the music playing through my laptop. I have my cable made up here and ready to go. Let's plug it into the earphone jack. And I have my stereo receiver set up right here on my workbench that I use to make my YouTube videos. And it sounds perfect. So it turns out you can use Ethernet cable as an audio cable. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.